Hello, everyone, and welcome to Grandstand Sports Data, your go-to channel for sports, statistics, and unbiased handicapping. In today's video, we will be diving into a critical topic for all sports bettors. Why too much data is not good for sports betting. We'll explore the pitfalls of information overload and how excessive data can hinder your betting decisions. So stay tuned as we continue our The Edge of the Grandstand series with Volume 2. First up, let's talk about overthinking and analysis paralysis. Ever spend so much time crunching numbers that you end up second guessing every decision? You're not alone. Too much data can freeze you up. Make it tough to pull the trigger on a bet. Imagine you're looking at a big game between the Lakers and the Warriors. You've got player stats, team stats, recent performance, historical matchups, injury reports. Shit, you even have weather conditions for an indoor game. The list goes on and on. Before you know it, hours have passed and you're buried in numbers. Now, here's where analysis paralysis sets in. With so much information, you begin second-guessing your initial lean. Did I consider Curry's recent ankle injury enough? What about the Lakers' bench strength? Is the public betting too heavily on one side, causing a potential bias in the lines? You end up in a loop constantly reevaluating and doubting your picks which freezes you up making it tough to pull the trigger on a bet the key is to find balance remember overthinking can be as detrimental as underpreparing the goal is to be well informed but also decisive keep your analysis sharp and to the point and you'll be better positioned to make quick confident betting decisions Next is data overload. Data overload is a common problem in sports betting. With so much information at our fingertips, it's easy to get lost. You might struggle to filter out the noise and focus on what's truly important. It can be overwhelming. You might find yourself spending hours analyzing all this data only to be more confused about which bet to place. More data doesn't always mean better predictions. Sometimes it leads to less informed decisions because you're drowning in information. The key is to focus on quality over quantity. Instead of looking at every possible stat, zero in on the ones that have the most impact. We at Grandstand Sports Data showed you how to go about this in our last Edge of the Grandstands video in Volume 1. Also, conflicting data sources can add to the confusion. Different websites and analysts might give you different stats and predictions. One site might show Team A having a higher win probability, while another site might favor Team B. The discrepancy can stem from different biases, models, or even weights within those models. Take, for example, betting on a football game. You might use one data source that heavily weighs recent performance, while another focuses on historical head-to-head -head matchups. If these sources provide conflicting outcomes, you're left second-guessing. To avoid this, it's crucial to identify the most reliable sources and stick to them, ensuring your data is consistent and your own strategy is sound. Remember, in sports betting, the goal is to make informed decisions based on reliable data. Too much information can cloud your judgment and make sure you focus on the key metrics that matter. Don't let conflicting data sources derail your strategy. Next would be time consumption. Processing and analyzing all this data takes time. Time that could be better spent you know, in different ways. Imagine spending hours buried in spreadsheets or even compiling data just to update your model. But to what cost? Is it actually making a financial difference? Well, let's take a look. In 2018, I built my first NFL model and ended up winning money throughout the season and the playoffs without doing any fundamental analysis. For the total of the season, I was up 7.8% with $780 profit with a $10,000 bankroll. But let's factor in that manpower. It took about 10 hours a week to maintain the model. This would be two hours of updating. So this would be inputting last week's stats, running simulations for the upcoming week. Then there was two hours of optimizing each week, and this is basically adjusting the weights and calculating my odds 
to compare to the market's odds to basically find my edge. Then there was one hour of tracking. This is basically just results. We took about 30 minutes on Sunday or 45 minutes. I would say 45 minutes on Sunday, tracked all the results. And then on Monday, tracked the result for that one Monday night football game. Then we took five hours of deploying. And what this is, is basically we took one hour a day from Tuesday through Saturday, and we compared the odds that we had compared to the odds in the market, which would show us our edge to pull the trigger on a bet. So that's 10 hours a week times 21 weeks when you count the playoffs. Now you're going to divide that by your profit of $780. So if you translated this to a job, I would be making a whopping $3.71 per hour. Who is taking that job for that pay? The answer is nobody. As you can see, the juice is not worth the squeeze. In other words, the reward is not worth the effort put in. I'm not telling you to eliminate modeling altogether, but make it much more efficient and less time consuming. The main goal of modeling should be, and if you don't listen to anything throughout this presentation, please listen to this. The main goal to modeling is to make you as unbiased as possible. Remember, betting should be fun, not a source of stress. It's important to strike a balance, allocate a set amount of time for data analysis, and stick to it. As I heard from a person who is much smarter than me, don't circumcise the mosquito. Enjoy the game, make informed decisions, and keep the excitement alive without burning yourself out. So if you find yourself staying up late, pouring over data, ask yourself, is this helping my strategy or is it just wearing me down? Sometimes less is more. Focus on key data points and make your analysis efficient. Next would be bias trouble. Too much data can also exacerbate cognitive biases, like confirmation bias. This is when you only look for information that supports your existing beliefs, ignoring anything that contradicts them. It skews your judgment and leads to poor betting choices. Let me give you an example. Say you're a huge fan of an NFL football team, and you believe they're going to have a breakout season. You start digging into stats, and naturally you focus on the data that supports your belief. Their improved offensive line, a few standout games from last year, and optimistic preseason reports. But what about the data that contradicts this? Maybe the defense has shown you know, significant weaknesses, or they've had a string of injuries in key positions. If you ignore this information because it doesn't fit your narrative, you're falling into the confirmation bias trap. Another example could be if you prefer betting on favorites because you believe they are more likely to win. You might focus on stats that show favorites winning, like their higher win percentage or better overall team stats. However, you might overlook the fact that favorites often offer poor value in terms of odds, and underdogs can offer better returns if you look at the factors like recent form, head-to-head -head performance, or even situational advantages like home field advantage, just to name one. It's important to balance your data analysis. Don't look for information that confirms what you already think. Challenge your assumptions by considering all the data. Even if it contradicts your beliefs, this approach helps you make more balanced, informed betting decisions and reduces the risk of falling into the cognitive bias trap. I will say, as a side note, that if you enjoy our content here at Grandstand Sports Data, please subscribe to our channel. And if you appreciate the hard work that we put into these videos, or even want to see more of content just like this, hit the like button so we know to give you more. Next is overfitting or misreading. In statistical analysis, overfitting is a big problem, especially in sports betting. Overfitting happens when a model is too closely tailored to a specific data set. Let me give you an example. Suppose you've developed a betting strategy based on the last 10 seasons of NFL data. Your model might predict outcomes very accurately for those specific seasons. However, when you apply the strategy to the current season, it might fail because the conditions and variables have changed. The teams, 
players, and even the rules might have evolved, rendering your model inactive or ineffective. With more data comes a higher risk of misreading data. Complex data sets can lead to incorrect conclusions and misguided betting strategies. For instance, you might notice that a particular soccer team has won 70% of their home games over the last five years. You might conclude that betting them to win at home is a sure thing. But if you dig deeper, you might find that the season they've lost key players to transfers or even injury. Or the team's dynamics have changed under a manager who has lost the room. Another example of misinterpretation is the weather factor in baseball. Suppose you have a data showing that games played in cooler temperatures at a particular stadium tend to have fewer runs scored. Betting on the under might seem like a good strategy in this situation and based on the historical data, but you don't account for other variables, such as changes in team lineups, pitcher performance, or even advancements in stadium maintenance. You could end up making poor bets. It's crucial to understand the data correctly to make informed decisions. Always look for context and be wary of overfitting your models to past data without considering current and changing factors. Now moving on to one of my favorites, which is overlooking fundamental factors. Don't forget about the fundamental factors. Things like team morale, weather conditions, or insider information might not be in the stats but they're essential for accurate predictions. Too much focus on data can make you miss these critical aspects. For instance, take team morale. Imagine a team that's been on a winning streak but suddenly faces internal conflicts or injuries. This isn't always reflected in the stats. A prime example is the 2020-2021 Brooklyn Nets. Despite having a stellar lineup on paper, internal team issues and injuries impacted their performance significantly. If you were only looking at their stats, you might have missed the warning signs of their eventual struggles. Weather is another critical factor. Think about outdoor sports like football or baseball. If a game is played in heavy rain or snow, it can drastically alter the outcome. For example, in the NFL, the 2017 game between the Buffalo Bills and the Indianapolis Colts was played in a blizzard. The extreme weather conditions led to low-scoring game that defied the statistical expectations. If you had bet on a high-scoring game based solely on season averages, you would have had you would have been way off. Lastly, let's talk about insider information. Sometimes knowing something that isn't public yet can give you an extreme edge. Maybe you hear about a star player who has the shits all day but is still expected to play. This kind of info can be a game changer. A recent example is in 2019 in the NBA Finals where Kevin Durant's injury status was closely guarded, you know, as a secret. Betters who paid attention to the inside reports had a better understanding of how his limited playtime would affect the Golden State Warriors. So while data is essential, it's not the whole picture. To make the most accurate predictions, you need to consider these fundamental factors. Don't let the numbers blind you to the real-world dynamics that can impact the game. If you want more information on finding what fundamental factors to look into, I'll put a link for our video in the description below. So let's wrap up with talking about the financial cost of accessing you know, and processing some large data sets. Whether you're a casual better or someone looking to turn a profit, it's important to consider the expenses involved. First, let's look at subscriptions. Many advanced data sites and analytical tools require a monthly or annual subscription. For example, a subscription to a comprehensive sports analytics site can cost you more than $100 per year. That's a significant investment, especially if you're not seeing a proportional return in your winnings. Next, consider the cost of software. High-end statistical analysis software often comes with a hefty price tag. This is on top of any subscription fees that you might already be paying for. The key takeaway here is to make sure your investment in data is worth the return. Sometimes simpler and more cost-effective strategies can be just as, if not more, effective. Always weigh the cost against the potential benefits and ensure you're not overspending in the quest for that perfect data set. 
I will say on a side note that any question you are looking to answer in terms of the sports betting world is definitely out there for free in some way, shape, or form. So what's the takeaway? While data is valuable, too much can be a pain in the ass, as you obviously seen throughout this video. Focus on the numbers that matter by creating an efficient model that does not take up too much time. Find the numbers that correlate to the question you are trying to answer in your respective sport, which means if you're trying to find margin of victory, you find the stats that correlate to the margin of victory. If you're trying to find win percentage, you find the stats that correlate to win percentage. So what this does is make you as unbiased as possible. And then from there, you can start weighing your fundamental factors. Every sport is different, so make sure to research the fundamental factors that impact your sport. You can get a taste of how we go about our bet selection process, which starts with those first two steps from one of our past videos, which we will provide a link to in the description below. So if you found this video helpful, don't forget to subscribe to Grandstand Sports Data for more insights. Like, comment, and share this video to stay updated with the latest tips and strategies in the sports betting world. Thank you guys for watching. Good luck with your bets. And remember to enjoy the game.